Imagine that we have an object of volume V, that's this white thing, uh, suspended in a fluid, that's a, the blue fluid, but which has a density of rho. Now the pressure of the fluid means basically that it's going to be applying forces to the boundary of the object all around it. Um, but we also know that the pressure increases with depth. So as we go deeper, our pressure goes up. So what that means is that the forces at the bottom of the object are actually going to be larger in magnitude than the pressure forces experienced at the top, just because of this pressure gradient um, as we go deeper. So if we look at the overall effect of these forces, it turns out that the sideways components, the sort of side to side ones, they all sort of cancel out, but we end up with a net upward force on our object. So the overall result is that we get an upward force on the object, and this is what is called the buoyancy force. So Fb, we often write it as Fb, is the net upward force on the object. So our object suspending, suspended in the fluid is going to experience an upward force called the buoyancy force. So you might wonder, how big is this force? It'd be nice to be able to have a way of figuring out how large this buoyancy force actually is so that we can actually use it to solve some problems. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, just a little thought experiment, we're going to remove the interior here and we're going to instead imagine that our object is like a, I don't know, like a balloon that's filled with the same fluid as the fluid surrounding it. So you imagine you're in a swimming pool, you've got this big balloon that you've filled up with water. Um, and so now our object is the same one, but now it's filled with the same stuff. Um, so the same forces are going to be acting on it, so the buoyancy force should be exactly the same. Um, but if you think about what should happen in that scenario, that water balloon inside your pool is probably just going to sit there. There's no particular reason why it should float to the surface or why it should sink. So it's actually just kind of going to kind of hover there. Um, so if the object was the same fluid, let's write this down, it would be kind of suspended there. So it wouldn't sink or it wouldn't float. So in terms of the forces on it, what that means is that that buoyancy force upwards must be matching the weight force of their object downwards. So the buoyancy force must just be equal to the weight of that balloon full of the same fluid. So if we want to find out the weight, well, we know how to find weights. We know that the mass, the weight is just going to be mg, right? Let's try that again. But the mass, well, we know the density and we know the volume. So the mass of our balloon full of water is going to have density so rho and volume V, so mass will be rho V. So the weight force will therefore be rho V times G. And we often just write it as rho G V, sort of the standard order. So that means that our buoyancy force, in this particular case, is going to be rho, where rho is the density of the fluid, times G times V. And we often express this as um, the buoyancy force is the weight of the displaced fluid. So now for sort of the, the, the trick here is if we now remove that water and replace it with something else, um, nothing has changed on the boundary here. The pressure forces are to do with the depth of the water outside. The boundary is still there. So actually no matter what's in the middle, that weight for the, the buoyancy force is going to be exactly the same thing. So it's going to be rho times g times v, no matter what is in the middle. Now the important thing to remember here though is that this rho is the density of the fluid, not the density of the object. Because that came from when we replaced the interior of our balloon with water, and that told us what the buoyancy force has to be. So we often write this as Fb is equal to the weight of the displaced fluid, because you imagine that the object is kind of pushing its volume worth of fluid away from itself, so it's displacing that much fluid. Um, and if we were to take that displaced fluid, which has volume V, and weigh it, that's the thing that, much, that must match the buoyancy force.
Okay, so the next question that we might want to ask ourselves is um, what determines whether an object will sink or float? Because the sort of the notion of buoyancy kind of suggests things that float, right? So back to our sort of uh, setup. Now we've got an object, just a generic object that has a volume of v, and this time we've sort of defined a density of rho for the object. A rho, and we'll call that rho obj. That's this one here. And then the fluid has density rho fl, just to sort of distinguish between the two. So will an object float? Well, the, it will float if the buoyancy force is greater than its weight force. So the answer is yes, if Fb is greater than the weight of our object. Now another way that will be helpful to express the same idea is that's also true if Fb divided by the weight force is greater than 1. You'll see why that's a helpful way to express this in a second. So let's just put to, put to use our knowledge from the previous slide. We know that our buoyancy force is equal to the density of the fluid. I'm going to put the FL on to make sure I get that right. Times G times the volume of our object. And the weight of the object is going to be W. And this time, using the same kind of calculation we did before, it's going to be the density of the object this time, times the volume, which gives us the mass. I'll put it this way, and then times g, because it has to be a weight force. So if we go and work out what Fb over w is, using those two terms, Fb over w is just going to be density of fluid times g times v, divided by density of object times g times v. And you can see that in this equation, a whole of the terms are just going to cancel out. And so that just equals the density of the fluid over the density of the object. And we're trying to see um, whether that is going to be greater than 1. Um, so this is, if we look at that now, um, this says that if this thing is greater than 1, if basically if the thing on the bottom of the fraction is smaller than the thing on the top. So if the density of our object is less than the density of our fluid. So we can say that in words as well. If density of object is less dense, is less than that of fluid. So for example, if you take a cork, a cork is much less dense than water. So if you put the cork in water and hold it down, then let it go, it will go to the surface because it is less dense than water. Whereas if you put a rock in the water, the rock is more dense than water, and so the rock will sink. So let's just finish this off with an example. So this lets us solve a problem like this one. So we've got an iceberg in some seawater here. So seawater has a density that's a little bit higher than fresh water, about 1030 kilograms per cubic meter. And our ice, one of the properties of ice that's interesting is when you freeze water, it gets less dense, it expands. So the density of ice is about 920 kilograms per cubic meter. And so we can now work out something like what proportion of an iceberg um, is below the water. Now just intuition from the previous slide, we decided that an object that is less, less dense should float. And that is indeed what's happening here. This, the iceberg is less dense than the water, so it is floating. Um, and so what has happened is basically it's floated to the top, and as it comes out of the water, sort of above it here, um, it's displacing less. So it's going to keep coming out of the water until the displaced fluid, so let's just say, let's just indicate maybe a second volume here. We've got a volume, let's say that this volume is, we'll call that our submerged volume. And then the overall volume of the iceberg will be a bit bigger than that submerged volume. It'll be, we'll just call that one V. And so the weight of the displaced seawater, only V sub of seawater is displaced. And that's what must match the mass, the weight of the iceberg itself. Okay, so if we want to find what proportion of an iceberg is below the water, what we're really trying to find is just V submerged divided by V total. Okay, so let's look at the weight of iceberg. Well, that's given by W is just 
again, mass of the iceberg times gravity, which is the density of the ice times g times the overall volume of the iceberg, it's the weight of the whole thing. And then the buoyancy force, we're going to have Fb is going to be the density of the displaced fluid, which is our seawater, so it's rho w times g times the volume displaced, which is not our whole volume, it's just the submerged volume, that's the only volume that's been displaced. And those two things will be equal. because our iceberg is not accelerating upwards or downwards, it's just floating there, it's in equilibrium. So this means that rho ice g v equals rho water g v sub. And a little bit of algebra, well we can cancel off the g's, they both divide both sides by g, that'll go away. Um, I can divide both sides by um, the density of water, which will cancel these ones off. And then I can also divide both sides by V, um, which will cancel these ones off. Um, you might want to double check that algebra separately yourself. But what this ends up being is that this becomes, a little bit of rearranging tells us that the submerged volume divided by V just ends up being the density of ice over the density of our seawater. So that's equal to 920 kilograms per cubic meter over 1030, which if you do the calculation is about 0 0.89 or 89%. And you've probably heard this before. So 90, basically 90% of an iceberg is below the surface. There's a little bit sticking out the top and our idea of buoyancy um, lets us actually understand this, uh, do some calculations with it. Um, this I just one last th thing to mention, um, this idea that buoyancy force um, is the weight of the displaced fluid, um, that is known as Archimedes principle. So if you hear, see reference to Archimedes principle, that is what we're talking about. Okay, and we'll leave it there.